الحمد للہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید الانبیاء والمرسلین وعلى آلہ واصحابہ اجمعین in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ May the peace, mercy, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters. When Abdul Aziz Malik bin Marwan, he was the governor and he was one of the Khalifa from the Umayyads as well. When he was dying, when he was on his deathbed, he asked his son to bring the shroud so that he can inspect the shroud that what kind of shroud they are using for him so he told him that bring the shroud I will be covered with so that I inspect it so when the shroud was brought to him he touched it he hold it and he said something very interesting something very powerful something which based upon the truth, something which is the reality of this dunya, something which is the reality of this world. He said that, is this what I will end up with from this life? Is this what I will end up with from this life? Means that this piece of cloth I'm going to carry from this world, look, God has given me everything, but still I'm not going to carry anything with me. So he said to himself this thing and this to others, those who were in his surrounding. And then he turned his back and he said to himself and to others while crying, he said, Woe to you, O life. Woe to you, O life. Your abundance is truly little. Your abundance is truly little. In real sense, is very little. And your little is indeed very short your little is going to survive for a short time for a temporary time O oh life indeed we were deceived by you we were deceived by you this is what he said my brother and my sisters you know if I tell you one thing you will agree with me my brothers and sisters that the life of this world is a home of extinction and the life of the hereafter is a home of eternity, is a home of immortality, is the home of happiness, is the home of joy, is the home of peace, is the home of means that which has no any ending, which has no any uh, uh, end, is everlasting. So the wise believers are those that they always prefer the everlasting over the temporary. They always prefer the everlasting pleasure over the temporary pleasure. Wise believer or the wise man or the wise woman will never prefer the worst over the good. The little over the everlasting. My brothers and sisters, just imagine this life, how much you're going to live, how much I'm going to live, 100, maximum 110, 110, 110 years. Just compare 100 years with the life of 1 trillion years. Just giving you the, you know, how they say words, a digits, a numbers. We know that the life of the hereafter is beyond trillion years. It's trillion, trillion. Keep adding the zero. Keep adding the zeros. Is infinity. Is everlasting. Is eternal. But just to make you understand, because sometimes we understand these things when by calculation and these kind of things. So what do you want? You want to live. You want one hundred, or you want one trillion. You want the pleasure. You want the enjoyment, or you want the happiness and the and the peace and the comfort of 100 years or you want the pleasure of more than trillion years of the life which one you want ask to yourself what is coming for you what is coming for me is much much better than my present 
وَلَلْ آخِرَةُ خَيْرُ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى Allah said in the Quran that what is coming for you, O Habib, they are torturing you, they are putting you in this kind of torture, this stress, this pressure. Don't worry. Don't get sad. Don't stress on them. Don't just bother with these people and whatever is happening in your surrounding. I give you the surety, O my Habib, O my Prophet. Allah is saying to him, Surah Al-Duha, Wal-Duha, Wal-Layli, Iza Sacha. Read that chapter. I think it's the 93rd chapter of the Holy Quran. Read that chapter. That will comfort you. وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى What is coming for you is better than present. What, is, what happened with you in the past is much, much better than that. And what is coming for you? وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبْقَى what is coming for you and what is coming for all of us, it is good, it is better and at the same time it is everlasting as well. It is not only good, it is everlasting as well. When you go outside to buy something, you make sure that commodity or that thing is quality wise is good. And at the same time you want to get something which is not only quality wise good, which lasts for a longer term, which lasts for a longer period. Or if somebody gives you the option like it will last throughout your life, sometime we get those kind of things that whole life warranty I'm giving you. Eh? Lifetime, warranty. lifetime warranty. Yes, lifetime warranty. And something we get lifetime warranty, we feel good. But we know for sure that this world, no matter how pretty this world is, no matter how beautiful and how attracting and how amazing this world is, it's not going to last forever. And we know that the life of the hereafter is good as well, is beautiful as well, is amazing as well. It's, it's attracting as well. And at the same time, it is everlasting. So subhanAllah, Allah is saying, وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ abqa." Two things, two qualities, two characteristics of the life of the hereafter. That what is coming for you, O oh my servants, what I have kept for you in the life of the hereafter is better, is excellent, is good is extraordinary and at the same time that goodness will be with you for the rest of your life. That goodness has the eternity, has no any ending, subhanallah. So wise are the people that they always prefer the eternal or they always prefer the eternity over the temporal, my brother, over the temporary things. That is why Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, choose that which is everlasting over that which is temporal over that which is temporary, over that which is very little, which is very small, my brother and sisters. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, أَرَضِيتُمْ بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ Allah is actually, Allah is not shocked because He knows us, He knows He because He is our creator, but He is still imposing a question on us. By this verse, He is shaking our minds, our hearts. Allah is saying, Allah is saying, are you pleased with the life of this world rather the life of the hereafter? How on earth you can be pleased with this life which is very short, which is very short-lived, which is temporary as compared to the life of the hereafter which is eternal? How on earth you are pleased with this life of this world rather than the hereafter? And then he says, فَمَا مَتَاوُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فَمَا مَتَاوُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Don't you know that that the life of this world is only the little enjoyment as compared to the hereafter. So what do you want? The enjoyment of 100 years or the enjoyment of more than the trillion years? Trillion years. I'm not talking about 100 years or 1 million years or 1 billion years. More than trillion, trillion, trillion years, my brother. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually telling us in this verse. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفَرِحُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَاعِ They, means that they're disbelieving people, they're disbelievers. And all those who have no, although they are believing in me, but they don't have the, any, my fear in their heart, they don't have any understanding of the hereafter, they don't have any proper understanding of this dunya, this world. وَفَرِحُوا They rejoice in the life of this world. They rejoice, they feel happy about this world. They think that whatever they have to get, they have to get in this world. And they feel on it. And they feel happy on it. They feel rejoice over it. 
ومل حیات دنیا فی الاخرت الا متا اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی says whereas the life of this world compared to the hereafter is but a brief passing enjoyment is a brief passing enjoyment my brother and sisters and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says وَمَا الْحَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ that the life of this world is nothing but play and amusement وَلَدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ and indeed the life of the hereafter the home of the hereafter the abode of the hereafter is the is the eternal is the better home is the better home my brothers and sisters who knows the value of this dunya more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there anybody because Allah is our creator Allah is the creator of this dunya this world who can understand the value of this world more than the creator of this world more than the creator of this world so if he is saying that this world is temporary so why we are not understanding why this does not settle in our mind when he says that that the worth of this world the the value of this world is not even equivalent to the to the wing of a mosquito so why we are giving our every single thing to this world and we are forgetting the life of the hereafter why to fight then why all of this quarrel why all of this animosity and jealousy and hatred why we should fight for for something which is not even equal equivalent to the to the to the wing of mosquito to the mosquito wing why we should cut our relationship for something which has no any worth for something which is which has no any which has no any value in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all this quarrel that we have with our family members our friends is for for this dunya for this world we want to make sure we get every single thing so that is why we do all kind of uh, you know madness in this dunya we create all kind of the chaos in this dunya because we want this dunya we love this dunya that is why so much love has penetrated in our minds and our heart about this dunya so that is why we have all these issues but the minute you will realize the value of this dunya you will you will only know to love people you will not these things will be very useless for you because you know this world is nothing that is why when two options were given to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that whether you want to live a life of a king or live a life of a humble person so he chosen the humbleness he chosen the life of as a life of a, a slave of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a servant of allah over that kingdom and kingship and all those kind of thing because he knew this is worthless i'm not here for this i'm here for the life which is much much better much much better my brothers and sisters nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that were this world worth a wing of a mosquito in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if the value of this world if it was equivalent to the worth of the mosquito wing allah subhanahu nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah would have never allowed a disbeliever to sip a water from this world to have a sip of water from this world if it was equivalent to the to the worth of the mosquito wing but it is not even equivalent to that it has not even worth like a mosquito wing so allah allows those who don't even believe in him to eat and to drink and to do whatever they want to do because allah allah, allah no this is worthless this is useless something that i don't like something which has no any value in my eyes what i will do i will just throw it i will just get rid from it i, I will not care about it I don't care if somebody is using it or somebody is misusing it. Somebody is taking the advantage of it. Somebody is not taking the advantage because that has no any value for me. So I don't care who talks or who does not talk. Same is the case with this dunya. Allah don't care that who is benefiting, who does not benefiting. What matters in the sight of Allah that who is preparing for the life of the hereafter? Allah di khalaq al maut. Allah has created this dunya, this world for what? Liyabluwakum. Allah has created life and death so that he can test us who amongst us is the better one who amongst us is better in actions subhanallah so brothers and sisters we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our eyes and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those those who prepare themselves for the life of the hereafter 
I end today's session with these beautiful words. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the blessings of the month of Ramadan. So it's over to my sister. She is going to share a beautiful presentation with you, inshallah, beautiful story with you. So until next, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Sophia Khan and today we'll be reading for you the story of Prophet Idris alayhi salam. Who is Prophet Idris? Prophet Idris alayhi salam, whose biblical name is Enoch, was the third prophet in Islam after Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. According to Wahhab, Prophet Idris alayhi salam was a well-built man with a strong broad chest and spoke with a low voice. It is also said that he was tall and handsome and always spoke with a calm demeanor. Prophet Idris was very intellectually curious. He would ponder the vastness of the universe that his creator made, from the sky, the earth, the moon, the stars, and the clouds. The Holy Quran mentions two verses which refer to Prophet Idris salam, and our testament to his character. And mention Idris in the book. Surely he was a truthful man, a prophet, and we raised him high in heaven. Quran chapter 19, verses 57 to 58. And mention, Ishmael and Idris and Dhul Kifl were all of patient. Surah Anbiya, Ayah 85. Prophet Idris' story. Prophet Idris alayhi salam was born during the lifetime of Prophet Adam alayhi salam. He was from amongst the followers of Sheath, Seth that is and ruled the progeny of Hazrat Adam salam, following the death of Sheikh. He was truthful, patient, and an extraordinary individual. It is reported in Hadith by Abu Dar that Idris salam, was the first man to introduce the art of reading and writing to mankind. SubhanAllah. Prophet Idris salam, was a sincere servant of Almighty Allah. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him as a prophet and a messenger and elected him as the ruler over the children of Adam. What began after the death of Sheath is the people of Cain lost guidance and sin and corruption began increasing rapidly and spreading. Idris alayhi salam could not bear to watch his own people falling prey to the influence of shaitan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Prophet Idris to call for jihad, holy war, against the corrupt followers of Qabil, Cain. Idris alayhi salam was the first prophet and messenger in the history of Islam to perform jihad against corruption. And as commanded by Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Idris alayhi salam gathered an army of men and battled in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against the transgressors and emerged victorious. It is related from Imam Jafar as Siddiq that one day, Prophet Idris alayhi salam was informed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would receive the rewards of all of the good deeds performed by man each day till his last breath. Prophet Idris alayhi salam was overjoyed with the news and thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immensely for all his blessings. But Idris alayhi salam decided to speak to the angel of death because thinking of him, he couldn't live without the fear of death. An angel agreed to Hazrat Idris alayhi salam's request to take him to meet with the angel of death. The angel flew to the fourth heaven with Prophet Idris alayhi salam on his wings and met with the angel of death. There he saw the angel of death sitting, moving his head in a peculiar motion. Idris' dear companion said to the angel of death, Prophet Idris wants to know if you could prolong his life. The angel of death was stunned. He replied, And where is Idris? He is upon my back, answered the angel. The angel of death replied, How astonishing! I was sent and told to cease Idris' soul in the fourth heaven. I kept thinking, how could I see it in the fourth heaven when he was on earth? SubhanAllah, he made it happen. And as the Lord instructed the angel of death, the soul of Idris alayhi salam was taken in the fourth heaven. Remember, we quoted earlier, and mentioned Idris in the book. Surely he was a truthful man, a prophet. And we raised him high in heaven. Ch Quran chapter, 50, chapter 19, verses 57 to 58. SubhanAllah. Following the death of Prophet Idris, corruption began to increase rapidly again. Several generations later, with no prophetic guidance, Satan finally managed to influence the children of Adam to commit their first act of shirk, polytheism. 
I have five quotes and sayings which are attributed to Prophet Idris salam, which I would like to share with you. Happy is he who looks at his own deeds and appoints them as pleaders to his Lord. None can show better gratitude for Allah's favors than he who shares them with others. Do not envy people for what they have, as they will only enjoy it for a short while. He who indulges in excess will not benefit from it. The real joy of life is to have wisdom. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mm -hmm.